Ms. Jailalita, you have an inner strength and a resilience that is the envy of many. Where does it come from? It comes from within me. I really don't know from where it comes. But I suppose my faith in God has something to do with it. You have fought through so many battles um, in your political career, in your personal, um, in, in, you know, just all the way it's been a battle, battle, battle. Uh, there has to be something more. Does it come from your mother? Does it come from your family background? Not really. As you yourself have put it, my life itself has been one big battle, one big struggle so far. But uh, neither my mother nor anyone else in my family were ever involved in politics. So it's a good thing I didn't know beforehand that this is the kind of life I would have to lead. Otherwise, probably, I would have tried to run away. <laughs> probably <laughs> chosen a different path, maybe. <laughs> yes. I didn't really have much choice. Uh, I mean, I didn't have much say in my choice of career. Because, as you know, first I was a part of the film industry. That was due to the influence of my mother. And the only reason I got involved actively in politics was due to my political mentor, Mr. M. G. Ramachandran. So left to myself, probably, I wouldn't have chosen either of these careers. Now, rightly or wrongly, uh, you are often uh, seen as a source of instability uh, to the BJP government. Now, uh, do you think that this conception has tarnished your image uh, in any way? Not at all, because it simply isn't true. I have not contributed to instability in any way. All I have done is to be very vocal in standing up for the state's rights. And whenever I felt that Tamil Nadu was getting a raw deal, I have never hesitated to voice my protest. And not just in issues regarding Tamil Nadu, but even other wider national issues, such as, for example, the women's quota bill, 33% reservation for women, about India not rushing to sign the CTBT, the unceremonious sacking of Admiral Bhagavat. Whenever I felt that the central government is going wrong somewhere, I have never hesitated to voice my criticism. And where it has been a question of fighting for the state's rights, I refuse to back down or be cowed down. So my firmness is sometimes, not sometimes, very often misunderstood as adopting a threatening posture or holding out the threat of withdrawal of support. That is not true. There are others who are allies in the present coalition government and they have openly been holding forth threats of withdrawal of support. I have never done that. I don't think I have ever, I don't think I have ever, I don't think I have ever behaved in such an immature fashion. But where every time that you say you're going to review support, perhaps and that is, um, you know, actually mistaken for um, actually threatening this government at the center. You see, I actually said I would review support only once. I never said that again. After that, it has been correspondence. Uh, after that, it has been media persons who have constantly been asking me about the so-called review of support. And whenever this question is thrown at me, I have to answer. So it appears that I'm constantly talking about a review of my support, but that isn't the case. You seem to have got a little soft on the BJP of late, um, as if you were soft peddling it a little bit. Is there any reason for that? Not really. That again is your perception. Do you think the BJP government is good to its allies? Do, they, do you believe that they treat their very important allies well? I can only answer for the AIADMK. 
I have gone on record before saying this, and I say this even now. The BJP's treatment of its allies leaves much to be desired. Other allies too have been very vocal in their uh, displeasure at the way they are being treated. But all this does not mean that the very idea of a coalition government is a failure. If you ask me why of late I have been a little soft towards the BJP, it is simply because I do not want the nation to think that a coalition government can never function successfully. I do not want the public to think that they were that I do not want the public to think that the very idea of a coalition government is a disaster. So, of late, I have been trying to impress upon everyone that it is our duty to make this experiment work, to make this coalition government work. It would help things if the BJP made it a little easier for its allies. <laughs> How do you expect them to do that? By being more accommodating, by engaging in consultation more often, especially where important policy decisions are concerned. Are you a bit disappointed that uh, the BJP has possibly let you down? And um, I say this with reference to the fact that you have been crying horse for the dismissal of the DMK government. So, in retrospect, do you think that you've been let down by the centre? It's not a question of the BJP letting down Jayalalitha, the individual. It's a question of the BJP letting down the people of Tamil Nadu. Now, Dr. Subramaniam Swami, um, who is uh, your still remains very close to Ms. Jailalitha here in Tamil Nadu, has uh, been constantly talking about wanting you to withdraw support. Now, um, what is your view? What is your real view on this? No doubt Dr. Swami is a friend, but his views are not necessarily my own. And just because Dr. Swami meets me frequently, it doesn't mean that I agree with everything he says, nor that he agrees with everything I say. Tell me, Ms. Jailalitha, do you want the petroleum portfolio for your party? This is a matter that's entirely between me and the Prime Minister. Sorry, I can't discuss this with anyone. Why did you disband the AIADMK led front in Tamil Nadu? There is um, a conception that this could be because the PMK, the TRC, and the MDMK were uh, going on saying that they were going to support the BJP at the centre, even if the AIADMK withdrew. Now, what is the real reason? Now, first of all, I did not disband the AIADMK led alliance. Where the TRC is concerned, it is insignificant because it is a one-man party. So, I'd rather not give it so much importance by talking about it in a nationwide program like this. Where the PMK is concerned, we still have uh, friendly ties with the PMK. The PMK leader, Dr. Ramdas, has announced that his party would continue to maintain friendly relations with the AIADMK. And I have expressed my happiness at his statement. Where the MDMK is concerned, right from the time of the elections, uh, the, the MDMK leader has been charting his own path without any consultation with the Allies. Mm -hmm. 25th, coming up in a few days' time, is a very crucial day in the, in what way? In the Supreme Court uh, about, about the special uh, courts and the special judges. Now, is there any apprehension in your mind as this day comes closer? Are you, is there any nervousness at all? I don't see any, but is there any inside? I am not nervous in the least because I have faced so many courtroom battles. This is just one more in the long series as far as I am concerned. And I prefer to take each day at a time. What will be, will be. My worrying or not worrying is not going to change things at all. What about the allegation that um, you have used your law minister who belongs to your party to try to influence um, in regard to these special court cases? No, that's not a correct interpretation at all. 
I'm sure you must have read uh, the law minister's statements. Whatever he has said is quite accurate. The state government in Tamil Nadu has acted against the constitution. I do not wish to say anything more about this at this juncture because the hearing is coming up very soon on the 25th before the Supreme Court and I don't want to be hauled up for contempt of court. This matter is sub judice and I must uh, tell you that the DMK state government here is just waiting with bated breath to see whether I won't say or do something that would make me liable for prosecution, that would make me liable to be hauled up for contempt of court. So I don't want to oblige them. I'm sure you'll understand. <laughs> I do. If it should ever happen, uh, do you think that Sonia Gandhi would ever make a good Prime Minister of India? It's a hypothetical question. I prefer not to answer that now. You know her well, of course. I can't say I know her very well. I know her, that's all. What is your opinion about uh, the problems that we are having at this point of time with the Shiv Sena and the cricket? Uh, there's a lot of confusion. I think what the Shiv Sena is doing is simply absurd, condemnable, and the central government should not allow this to continue any longer. What about uh, the central government uh, continuing to be friends with the Shiv Sena despite what's going on? Do you think that uh, this is the kind of thing that could precipitate into them actually you know, not being friends anymore and breaking off with each other? They did have an alliance during the time of the elections. But what the Shiv Sena is doing now is simply unconscionable and no responsible central government can allow the state of affairs to continue. The central government should act firmly with the Shiv Sena and put them where they belong, behind bars. Do you ever see yourself, Ms. Jailalitha, quitting politics? <laughs> Very often. That's my dream. <laughs> and what would you do? I'd live on my farm, not having to meet people, not having to answer telephone calls, not having to make speeches. I'd live happily amongst my books, my music, with my pets, my dogs, and I love agriculture. That is my dream, in fact, to quit politics and live on my farm, away from the rat race, away from the madding world. A dream that um, could come true any time? Who knows? It's a dream after all. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has a favorite dream. This is mine. <laughs> now, as a political leader, uh, do, you ever feel, um, do you ever feel the problem of not having freedom and not having privacy? Yes. That is something I sacrificed when I entered the film industry, not just when I came to politics. I was 16 when I first took up acting as a career. And right from that day, I have sacrificed my privacy. And after I came to politics, I have totally sacrificed my personal life. Because everything is up for public view. There is nothing that I have for myself. No time for myself. You probably dream of uh, being away from people like me. <laughs> <laughs> I like you very much. <laughs> I have noticed of late that you have become um, more press friendly and somehow you're much more amenable to people talking with you. Uh, what, what, is, what has made this change? I'm growing day by day. I'm evolving. I think I've become more mature. And able to handle probably people who are difficult? <laughs> yes. I think I have learnt a lot and one keeps learning as one goes on. Earlier, I used to get irritated and angry with the media. Now I don't. I, th I take everything in my stride. Mm -hmm. You've often talked of not having a very favourable press. And well, that's the truth. Why do you say that? Well, just look at all uh, that's been written about me right from the time I came to politics. 
I have really taken a bashing in the press. <laughs> Would you accept it if it was a balanced story, Ms. Jailalitha? Would you accept it if You see, if what it was has fair? really hurt is that most of the criticism against me has been without any basis, based on wrong facts, based on false information, and based on a total misunderstanding of me. Many of the stories that have been written about me are pure fiction. I wouldn't mind if the criticism was constructive or even if the criticism was based on true facts. But that has uh, rarely been the case. Well, I hope the situation will improve now that you are amenable to people talking with you. And on that note, I would like to say thank you very much indeed. And I do really appreciate your time today. It's been a pleasure talking to you.